the remainder of our time this morning, we're going to look at patience. Patience. <clears throat> you know, a guy was in the grocery store and had his child in the basket. You know, the scenario. And the kids wanting this, wanting that. You know how that goes? Give me this, give me that. I want this, that. And, <clears throat> and then starts to throw a little tantrum and screaming and carrying on. And, and the man says, patience, Albert, patience. So uh, finally gets all the things collected. He gets in the line and the kid is screaming. And he goes, patience, Albert, patience, Albert. And, and uh, the line is long. And finally he gets a little bit further and the kid is still screaming, carrying on. He said, patience, Albert, patience, Albert. The lady behind him says, oh, this is so, so wonderful. You have such patience with your child, Albert. He said, oh, no, that's, that's not Albert. I'm Albert. <laughs> <laughs> Now, who needs the patience here, right? Yeah, patience. We've all been there. We need this thing. I want to give you a simple definition this morning of patience. It's the Christian virtue produced by the Holy Spirit that enables a believer to calmly wait without complaint. <clears throat> I want you to say that with me in a moment. Calmly wait without complaint. Say it now. Calmly wait without complaint often in the most discomforting situation, whether it's with Albert or you're the person that's gone to the emergency at the hospital and what you think is major, they don't think is so major. And they're taking everybody else ahead of you. It's to calmly wait without complaint. Sometimes we wait, but we complain all about it. Or we can't wait to tell everybody and complain all about it. Uh, calmly wait without complaint. I want to further elaborate on this. There's an Old Testament passage. I've already kind of alluded to it. It says, but those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You have to wait on the Lord. Uh, as we've already prayed, God's not on your time schedule. He does things on his time schedule, and he just says, wait on me. We often get ourselves in trouble when we run ahead of the Lord or we lag behind the Lord. We just need to wait on the Lord. I like this passage in Proverbs, in Proverbs 14, 29, because usually when we get impatient, uh, we get a little angry, we get a little testy, we get a little bitter. We get, I mean, you know, we get all these emotions flaring up. A patient, literally the Hebrew says, slow to anger man, has great understanding. But the quick-tempered, the impatient person displays folly. Uh, that's like saying, you're a fool. You're a fool. All right. I want to jump to the New Testament. There's so many, so many passages on the New Testament, but... Um, there's actually eight different Greek words in the semantic domain for patience. This must be a pretty important thing if they've got to use eight different words to, to cover the, the territory of this. Uh, I know you don't know these. I just want you to see. There's eight different ones, okay, eight different words. A and they fall into basically three subsets uh, of patience. A and the very first one there focuses on having an emotional calm, all right, in the face of somebody provoking you. Somebody's getting in your face, and you're calm. I often say in an argument, the person who talks the softest wins. Did you ever realize that? Because the person who's talking the loudest is all out of control, and the other person is talking so, so softly. In fact, if you're in an argument, start talking softer so the other person's got to calm down to hear you. And, and it works. It, it just does, okay? Now, now this... This is about being calm when you're provoked or you have some misfortune in your life. You, you calm. In fact, the word itself means macrothumia. Macro is long heat. Instead of having a short fuse, you have a long fuse. Now, I got all these sticks of dynamite up there. Uh, if you're the guy that's got to light that, you would prefer, what, the short fuse? Uh, or would you prefer the long fuse? You say, I want the long fuse. I want to get out of here. I want to clear out. That's the whole idea here. You have a long fuse. It takes a long time until the heat hits and combusts. And there's a, out of this temptation to be impatient, you explode. No, you're, you're very patient. 
you're willing to, to be calm, even in spite of difficulties. I call this waiting patiently without complaining. You just wait patiently without complaining. <clears throat> the second subset focuses on the situation itself. Three of the eight wor words suggest that you just bear it. Okay, now I don't know if you're a weightlifter. Obviously, you can tell I'm not. <clears throat> and, and, but I do know this. I mean, just lifting the grandkids up. After a while, they get heavy. Uh, you know, and what do I want to do? I want to pass them off to my wife. <laughs> she works out. I don't. Come on. Here, here, honey. What? It's to bear up under it. I, whatever it is that's, that's causing you the frustration to be impatient. The one word means to remain under. The second word means to bear under. Then the third one means to do either one of those emphatically. Really remain and bear under the pressure. Sometimes there's a situation that is so pressing as you feel like a pressure cooker and you just want to, in impatience, get it over with and just explode and all of that kind of thing. And, uh, but the second set of words focuses on that whole, whole idea. Now, the next one suggests that you put up with it, not bear under it. You put up with it. Kind of like this guy. How would you like to be the guy behind him, huh? And this kid's putting up the side. The guy behind me can't see. He's at the ball game. I always hate that when I'm at the ball game. Somebody, even when there's a campaign speech, you know, and the guy in the crowd lifts up his sign for whatever candidate it is when he can't see the guy that's, you know, actually doing the speaking. You put up with someone or something that is really annoying. In our household, that would be me. <laughs> Even, even my grandson said yesterday, he said, you know what, Grandpa, you can be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you? <laughs> you can be annoying. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the whole idea here is someone is just annoying you, and, and you're able just to put up with it. Patience. Patience. The third subset of these focuses on duration. The length of it. Uh, one of the, the last two words suggests that you just endure. I got this, this bird out there, and he's in a hailstorm, and he, he's just taking it. He's just taking it. Sometimes that, that's what patience is. You just take it. Could you respond? Yes. But you just take it on the chin. A strong person can take it on the chin. He can. He just endures it. The final of the words is you persevere in spite of it. That kid, every time a play takes place, he puts that up and you can't see it. Then you got to watch the jumbotron because you didn't see the real play. On, on the, you see what I'm saying? You, you, you persevere. You persist. You hang in there with your calm. It focuses on duration. I want to sum this all up by saying patience is a Christian virtue of waiting without complaining. Say that with me. Waiting without complaining. All right, waiting without complaining, often in discomfort. Now, there's always a trigger. There's always a trigger that brings on the need for patience. It says, we glory in tribulations. I put trials and tribulations, they're synonymous terms. Sometimes the Bible translates it a trial, sometimes it translates it a temptation. Uh, and it's a solicitation to do something, like in your case, it's soliciting you to get impatient, get angry, get upset, get frustrated, whatever the way you respond to your impatience, okay? It's the trial, the tribulation, it's the problem, it's the difficulty, it's the annoyance, it's the nuisance, it's, it's all of that, whatever. We glory in that. How many here would have got up this morning and said, Lord, give me more? Oh, no hands have gone up. Oh, I'm taking mine down too. <laughs> no, no, he said, but we glory in tribulations also. Why? Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. That's King James Version. Tribulations, your difficulties, your trials, your problems, they work patience. They're, they're the trigger that means that you've got to now be patient. People say to me, hey, pray for me that I'll have patience. I said, you really know what you're asking me to pray for? 
the trigger is going to be a problem. You really want a problem in your life so you can develop patience? I, I don't think so. But that's what happens. When you pray for patience, God says, okay, I'll give you patience here. You're going to have a flat tire on the way to church today. <laughs> oh, but I got to sing in the choir. Oh, I got to, you, you got this role to play. Tribulation works patience. Now, it could be financial difficulties. And you get very impatient. You get anxious. It could be a physical problem. Okay? Uh, you got, uh, you didn't, uh, you know, anticipate that you're going to have to have surgery. This messes up all my plans. All right? Uh, that's the trigger. You become impatient. It could be mental anguish. The mental anguish, I think this is the one, you know, the what if. Do you ever say, what if this happens? Or what if this uh, you know, what if the, the doctor's news is bad news? Uh, what if this happens? What if that happens? Uh, what if I don't have enough money to cover it? Uh, what if this person says no to me? Here's a single person going to ask someone on it. What if they say no? You know what I'm saying? It's the mental anguish of the what if, the hypothetical, what you don't know that triggers your impatience and you do things that you would not otherwise do. Maybe it's a family crisis that causes you impatience. Maybe it's a relational issue um, that uh, there's a problem in your marriage, uh, a problem with your children, and you become very impatient. God, why aren't you doing something? You get very impatient, very impatient. Maybe it's an employment problem. I don't have work. Uh, man, no matter what I do at work, they're not happy with me. God, I, I, you get so impatient. You get impatient with yourself. Why do I keep making the same mistakes? There's always a trigger, annoying people. Uh, there's the whole idea of a, a house well, with, a, with sinkholes. I'm just pouring all my money into this house. God, why is this all happening to me? You become very impatient. Something triggers it where you need to just be patient, trust God. Maybe it's aging disgracefully. You say, this is not the way I intended to, to end my life. <laughs> this is not, not how I expected life to turn out. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's car problems. It goes on and on. But this much I do know. Everyone has one. Everyone has a trigger. There is no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Common to man. They're universal. People say to me, but you just don't understand. I say, yep, you're right. I don't understand the problem you have with your wife, but I know the one I got with mine. <laughs> All right? It's common. It's common. I know that it's common because it also says in 1 Corinthians, if you're married, you will have trouble in this life. So if you thought you were going to get married and everything going to get better, who are you kidding? <laughs> you just doubled your problems. You got yours and hers now. You see what I'm saying? Everyone has one, a trigger that, that, that can be pulled at any time. So you pray, oh, hey, would you pray that I'll have patience? Ooh. Some of you got multiple triggers because you got multiple of these and, and God can send off any one at any time so that you'll learn to calmly wait without complaint. Calmly wait without complaint. We glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation work with patience. This is the way modern, the new King James Version puts it. We glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance. You persevere. You hang in there. You calmly, continually, constantly wait without complaint. Without complaint. There's various manifestations of uh, patience. Uh, the first one is downward. Downward, God is patient with us. In the Old Testament, it talks about the story of Noah. For 120 years, Noah was building the ark, and the whole time he was preaching, and, and the whole time it says, God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. He's, Noah's preaching, repent, judgment is coming, God's going to destroy the world. Repent, turn to the Lord. For 120 years, and he had no converts, only his family of eight. He says, that God waited patiently all that time while people did their own thing and did turn to the Lord. And it says, and only a few people, eight in all, 
we're saved through the water. You come to the New Testament, and you got this guy by the name of Apostle Paul. And the Apostle Paul, before he was the Apostle Paul, was Saul. And Saul was breathing out threats to slaughter, to ground up, to imprison Christians. And then one day, the Lord met him on the road to Damascus in a bright shining light, knocked him down to the ground, blinded him, and he cried out, Lord, who is it? Who is this? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. But in Timothy, he reflects back upon that, and he says, but for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that me, the worst of sinners, he says, I am, I am the worst, I was the worst of all. Of the worst. I was on the bottom rung of those who, who, who would be considered a good and godly person, even though I practice self righteousness. He said, Christ Jesus, he, he saved me that he might display his unlimited patience. God, let me do all those crazy things so I get to the end of my rope. And when, when he struck me with the light, I came to Jesus and, and I surrendered it all. He says, as an example of those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. Listen, God could save him. He was patient with him. He's patient with you. God is patient with you. He's patient with me. In fact, in, in 2 Peter it says, as the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. Some understand slowness. He is patient with you. God puts up with you and me. He's not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I shared the gospel one time with a guy that was in his 90s, and he accepted Christ as a Savior. Not too much later, because he had a broken hip, he was in a nursing home. We baptized him by immersion. Uh, we, we put him in one of those slings, and they cranked him up, rolled it over the, the tub there, cranked him down, and then he was in all but his head, and I just dipped his head back in and up, and we cranked him all out because I often ask, why wait till he's 90? God was patient with him all those years. Not, way, not, not wanting anyone to perish, he finally came to Christ. God is so patient with us. He wants us to come to him now, and the fact that we don't, he puts up with us, he's patient with us. That's the downward patience. Now there's an upward patience. We need to be patient with God. God made his promise to Abraham saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. Well, at the time he gave him that, he was 70 years old, and his wife, you know, she was you know, pretty young too. She was, what, her, in her 60s. And, and, and so, uh, and they're saying, uh, Hey, God, uh, do you know what biology here? You know what's happening in the, in the world here? And, uh, but at the age of 70, he said, I'm, I'm going to bless you. And so they kind of took things in their own hand, at least his wife Sarah did, uh, and, and she tried to push off uh, her, her handmaid Hagar and said, listen, have a child through her. That'll be the son that God had promised. And God says, no, that's not the son I'm promising. See, she was impatient with what God was doing because you see, 30 years later, Abraham's 100 years old, and God delivers on his promise. Most of us pray today and expect, as soon as we get out of here, that we're going to have the answer to the promise. My brother was visiting some friends of ours out in uh, Oregon, and uh, he went to visit the, the fellow that was in our youth group when we were kids, and uh, he wasn't there. He had moved, but he said, my folks still live in the town. Call them. So he did. He called them. And he got together with the Gainers. And he said, had a delightful meal, wonderful dinner. At the close of the meal, he said, Mrs. Gainer said to him, David, is your brother Eddie a, a Christian yet? And uh, my brother Dave said, no, I don't know that I can say that for sure. And she said, okay, I just wanted to know because he's on my daily prayer list and I didn't know if I needed to take him off. Now, she'd been praying for him for over 30 years. For over 30 years. Sometimes we give up long before God gives up. God is wanting to see, do we really mean business Will we really trust him thick and thin, in and out, when it's hard, when it's difficult, when it seems like there's no one there hearing me, will I still pray and then God come crashing in to answer the prayer? 
we need to be patient with God. The Bible goes on to say, and so afterward, after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Abraham finally got the promise. It was on God's time schedule, not on Sarah's time schedule. We need to be patient with God, upwardly patient. The next one I want to look at is outward patience. We urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle. Encourage the timid. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. That includes your spouse. That includes your kids. That includes your parents. That includes your teachers, your boss, your employees, the pastor, <laughs> the deacons, the kids in vacation Bible school. It, it, that, this includes everyone. It's your neighbor. It, it's the guy at the gas station. It's the guy that cuts you off. What do you do when a guy cuts you off? You're driving on the road. You, need to, you just need to remind yourself, there's been times when I've been in a hurry and I've cut other people off. He must have a major appointment to get to. And you know what? You handle that so calmly. But when you're in a hurry and they get and someone cuts you off, and now everything has changed. You know, you still got to tell yourself the same truth. Okay? Be patient with everyone. I want to suggest to you, when you're patient with everyone, that includes being patient with yourself. With yourself. Sometimes we get frustrated with ourselves. Melvin uh, <clears throat> Renfro took me to the driving range. There is nothing so small as that that should make a preacher want to cuss. <laughs> he was so patient with me. I, how, how many times have you been in the driving range and the guy next to you got to yell four because the ball's coming his way? <laughs> it was bouncing. Up. I, I, I'm not a very good golfer. But... <clears throat> You can't go one time and expect to be a pro. Is that right? It takes practice. It takes practice. You have to be patient with yourself. Sometimes we have expectations of ourselves that are unrealistic. I think I'm going to be a pro because I'm just going to go out there. Psh, come on, something that small? Surely I can whack that as well. Are you kidding me? And, and, and there are other things in life we expect to be expert on. For example, most people are, uh, think that they're an expert on marriage. And I ask, how, well, how many books have you read? What research have you done? And they say, well, none. Well, what makes you expert? Well, I've been married. Well, maybe you're not doing it the right way. <laughs> what makes you an expert? You, you see what I'm saying? Sometimes we, we, we don't set a standard, and other times we have a standard so high that we can't meet it. We can't meet it. You have to include being patient with yourself. Now, there's an obvious application to all this. How do I do this? How do I be patient? Really? You really don't do it. You don't do patience. Mm -mm. God the Holy Spirit does it in you. God the Holy Spirit does it in you. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The old is gone, the new has come. You've gotten the Holy Spirit. He, he, he's come into your life, and uh, he's the one that produces the fruit. So where do I get it? How do I get him to produce this fruit in me? How do I do that? It's very easy. First of all, you have to trust in Jesus as your Savior. We've been, uh, had chairs up here for weeks, and, and the one chair was the natural man. He's the man that does not have the Spirit. He's empty on the inside. And uh, uh, he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. He's got this God-sized eternity set inside of him that only God can fill. And he tries to fill it with everything to give him peace and to make him patient. And nothing does it. In order to actually become a genuinely patient person, calmly waiting, without complaining, you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior because then the Holy Spirit, who produces the fruit of patience, invades you. He's in you. Now you've got patience. Now you've got to work it out. The Bible says work out your salvation. Once he's worked it in, you work it out. So patience is inside. But you're a baby Christian. You just move from, from being without, without Christ to now with Christ. You're a baby Christian. You need to grow. You need to grow in your trust. And I put here, 
Grow in your trust in the sovereignty of God, that God is in control of everything. He's even in control when the guy cuts you off. He's even in control when your neighbor is complaining about you know, something that's going on on your yard that's falling into their yard. He's, he's in control of everything. And you learn to trust and say, God, I'm going to calmly wait for you to do something here because, God, you're in control. And, and as I do that, I, I start to move towards being a spiritual person. I'm going to tell you something right now. In all my years of ministry, I've never met a truly spiritual person who was not also patient. What's that tell you? Truly spiritual people manifest the fruit of the Spirit. So when, when the, I'm a spiritual person, I become patient. Impatience has no place in a true spiritual life. It doesn't. So as the further I move this way, you know, I'm growing in my spiritual journey, I'm becoming far more patient. Now, if I don't grow in this spiritual journey, trusting in God daily as I did to have him save me, and I'm trusting him every day in all my circumstances, trusting that he is sovereign and he's ruling over everything that's going on, if, if I don't, I slide backwards and I become more carnal. And when I become more carnal, I find that I'm not walking in the spirit and, and, I'm, and I'm in dark territory. I'm impatient. I'm not where I should be. But if I will just walk in the spirit and, and, and just bring it all back to God and, and live my life depending upon the things of the spirit of God to open my mind, to give me understanding, read the scriptures, share my faith, talk to people about Jesus, all of that stuff. And, and I, I just walk in the spirit. I will begin to become a very, very, very patient person. In fact, the final thing is then God will actually produce this in me. He produces so I become like that spiritual person who is not impatient. I have a patience that just flows naturally from the fruit that the Holy Spirit is producing in me. The Holy Spirit produces the fruit of patience when you walk in the Spirit. You live in the Spirit. The Spirit is the Spirit who inspired the Word. I'm in the Word. His Spirit is speaking to me through the Word, bearing witness with my Spirit. I'm doing what the Word says. I'm praying. I'm even praying in the Spirit. I'm praying. And I'm walking. I'm having that life. He produces patience. People say to me, man, I can't believe the change in my life when I depend upon the Word and the Lord of the Word, the Holy Spirit. He changes me. God's in that business. God is in that business. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. And as I've said, it is calmly waiting without complaining. Say it again. Calmly waiting without complaining. Let's pray. Father in heaven, produce in us the fruit of the Spirit of calmly waiting without complaining. We know that there are going to be circumstances that will arise that will frustrate us. We know there's going to be people who will arise that will annoy us. We know, Lord, there will be things that happen too quickly and, and Lord, uh, or too slowly, and we grow very impatient with you, with others, with ourselves. May the Spirit impress upon us at that moment to calmly wait, trust in your sovereign plan that you will work everything together for good. Help us do that, O oh Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
sacrifice for the greatest prize. Still more awesome than I know. if they would come down to the front. We're going to extend the right hand of fellowship to, uh, well, uh, th this person's known me all my life, my brother Jerry Henderson and uh, his wife Cassie. They have uh, indicated they want to become members of uh, Bethany Church, and so we're going to officially welcome them into the family. Um, they were unanimously uh, accepted by council, and we're so glad that you're here as a part of our church family. And God bless you. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Love you. All right. Thank you. And the New Testament tells us they extended the right hand of fellowship to those who became members of the church. And so uh, all of you, afterward, uh, make sure you seek them out, shake their hands, tell them they're, you're glad that they've chosen to be a part of Bethany Church. Let's pray. Father in heaven, help us to not be so impatient. Not upon you, not upon others, not upon ourselves. Lord, uh, may the Spirit remind us to just calmly calmly wait without complaining just to stand back and see the deliverance of God to watch you at work and then praise your great name bless I pray O Lord in Jesus name amen God bless you have a wonderful Lord's Day